Hey, a pleasure and good day, everyone. This is Sports Fanatic News. I'm Joe Boric, and this is going to be our Lehigh Valley Phantoms, the next edition of the Ghostly Take Weekly Preview as we play the Worksbury Scranton Penguins this week, followed by the Utica Comets, the Old Binghampton Devils, and then the Syracuse Crunch on Saturday. So let's get right into it. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe down below on the easy-to-use widget up above. Of course, I took the day off yesterday from posting a video. We're back today posting a couple videos today as this is the preview to the Phantoms. So the Phantoms, of course, play their first game of the week tonight at 7.05 out in Wilkesbury, where Wilkesbury's 3-1. The Phantoms are 0-3-1. I see a lot of people, whether it's Facebook groups or analysts, really over-analyzing and overreacting to this season early and saying, oh my god, Ian LaPierre is already in over his head. Oh my god, this season's already not going the way we want it to go. There are a couple games into the damn season. I mean, let's take a break here and wait. You can't judge a season off of the first week. I don't care what your team's expected to do in that season. I don't care if you're one of the worst-run organizations in the whole sport, which the Phantoms are obviously not. But look at the damn Sabres who are in the NHL. They actually, when their players play and they have the right mentality on the ice... Ergo, also have Kyle Posa, who's a great leader. Look what they're doing. This Phantoms team has great leaders and a good run organization. So, eventually, they're going to rebound in my eyes. Kyle Riley's one of the best captains in the AHL. And then you have great... <clears throat> excuse me. You have great leadership throughout. I've been having some, like, bad mucus in my throat. And, um... That's that's kind of why I think this team's going to be fine. You have good leadership. The one thing that's, that's big with this team, too, is they got injuries early, and the Flyers have injuries early. That is not putting another veteran defenseman. Tony Androkis is exactly right. What happened, He tweeted the other day when they made that mistake in the corner, and they got the easy goal where there was nothing. He just They hung the goalie out to dry. There's nothing you can really do as a goaltender in that situation. That's what happens when you have a young defense. Well, they have Adam Glendening, and they also brought in Nick Sealer to be a good veteran AHLer. Well, Nick sealer has been playing primarily with the Flyers, so they don't even have their full team yet coming back. Um, They just had Cooper Zek come back, who's a 22-year-old defenseman who's going to keep developing in the AHL. with the Bruins organization before. So that'll be helpful. Edgar coming back. Jamula, obviously, he's already been in, but like, Having these different guys come back, and then whenever you have more and come back in the future, like all these things are going to be helpful, plus the team on the ice currently still hasn't played bad in two of the four games. In the other two, yeah, it was more the goaltenders saved their bacon, as Jim Jackson would say when it comes to Ursan and Sandstrom. But in the first two games of this season, they got beat by Zach Foucault and Philippe Lindbergh. It's not like the Phantoms played like trash. They actually played well. And Bob Rotruck, the great announcer of the team on the radio, highlighted it very good when um, he did his welcome back um, little video that they did. They just got beat by goaltending. I mean, the, the, the Phantoms could easily have at least, at very least, they could easily have one win already and then have that overtime point and be be better, or they could even have the two if the both goaltenders for Coley, who's now living up to what his projections were years ago, he's starting to live up to, and Lindbergh, who came in as a rookie and just took the torch, I think it's too early in the season to judge anything based off of Izzy and LaPerriere over, in over his head. I don't think he is yet, and I don't think he is at all until that's more a month in the season, or two, because we see things, this is an 82-game season, we got, or 76 game season, I should say, in the AHL, it's a marathon again, not a sprint, you got to be patient with that, if this was the COVID season, where the season's shorter, everybody's not even playing that many games, you still shouldn't overreact after four freaking games, but you, you can maybe overreact more, but the way that I see some stuff in Facebook groups from some um, people writing about the Phantoms, relax, it's four games in, give it at least a month, and also... When it's a marathon, not a sprint, we've seen teams suck, whether it's in the AHL or NHL, for mostly the first half of the damn season, and then all of a sudden turn into the Blues in the second half of the season, and then go on a run. So it, it's not unheard of. Like th These things happen. So like you go on a 10-game winning streak, you go on a 10-game like, a point streak, you go on a 15-game point streak. Like th th There's different things that happen that make a team as hot as they were cold. And the Phantoms are cold because they got beat by two good goaltenders. It looks like they came out more flat after those two games. The goaltenders saved their bacon. And you establish a team 
by playing first and foremost, very having very good sound goaltending, have very good sound leadership, and then also having a good developing defense. The other thing we have to remember is Millman, who played very well as a youngster, looked like the most, other than maybe a guy like Hogberg, who's playing um, really well this season and really bringing himself in, or Logan Day, looked like the most relaxed when it came to youngster in there, and especially rookie. So uh, he didn't really look outmatched. So you're missing key pieces, and you're missing a veteran like Sealer, who's very solid on defense at the AHL level, and is obviously a good swingman to mix in at the NHL. So I think when it comes to this weekly preview, most of this is mo- mostly about just let's calm down, let's relax, let's let this season play out. It's only four games in. Like <laughs> it's, it's, it's a marathon again, people, not a sprint. So let's just relax. Let's have... As much, let's have confidence in this team because I do like what it comes to where this team definitely has shown more spunk. I didn't mind Garrett Wilson getting suspended for a game because you should stand up for your team. So I think this team's shown more old school with the new school, and I do like that, but it takes a bit. It doesn't take four games. I don't care about, like, yeah, people say we well, had the preseason, yada, yada, yada. They they highlighted that pretty good on a podcast I listened to the other week. It doesn't look like most teams, when it comes to the lineups they put out, care as much about the preseason as they did in the past. So in terms of having the preseason, it's more just to see chemistry and how guys get along line-wise. Stats-wise are obsolete because it doesn't seem like people go as hard in the preseason. It's basically like the Pro Bowl in some aspects. So I think when it comes to this, you got to give it time for the season to adjust and let this team get going, let this team get churning. They're trying to develop people first and foremost and then win. That's kind of the change, too, from going from Scott Gordon to Lappy. You bring in a guy that knows the development of the organization like the back of his hand because he's been doing it with the players. He's been dealing with the that side of it and dealing with the prospects since he's kind of come into the coaching staff. So the Flyers, it seems like, switched their degree from, yes, we want to win in the HL, but we want to first and foremost make our best prospect the best they can be, which would help if we can win. But we also want to obviously make them the toughest they can be on both ends, and sometimes that takes a little bit to get going. That's why he benched Morgan in the one game. I didn't think he should have put Morgan back in at the end of the game. I don't care if you're trying to get the game time goal or not. He doesn't learn his lesson about how he was piss poor in that whole game if you put him back in and then he scores at the end of the game. There's no lesson learned there. So I agree with that as well. This We just got to be patient. We're playing Wilkesbury, a rivalry tonight. I expect a good game. I'm not going to predict a win, but I expect a good game. I expect a good competitive game, and I expect whoever's in net again to be performing really well. A game that will be interesting, um, you're basically playing the old Binghampton Devils team. The Utica Comets are really solid to start this year at 3-0, really been hitting on all cylinders. You have teams that if you take advantage of them this week, it's really just going to show exactly what I said, minus the Crunch, who are 1-2-1, and one, but minus them, you're taking advantage of two good teams. If you can play the Crunch, or not the Crunch, if you can play the Comets and the Penguins really well, and then you still just get beat by great goaltending, or you find a way to win one of those two games, and you beat the Crunch, then you're in a good, solid spot already as you move into the next week when you play, well... Wilkesbury again. They're playing Wilkesbury a lot, where it'll be the third, the Wednesday, the third of November. So I think it's just really in this weekly preview. Let's all just take time to just relax and realize it's only a couple games into a season that again is a marathon, not a sprint like it was last season in the COVID season. You got the 76 game, so you still got 72 left. So it's not like you have any rush here to, to, to be worrying about this team. And it's a different mantra, it's a different model, it's a different system. It doesn't just go like this usually for that. We see teams do that. I understand people are going to come, well, so certain teams get new coaches that they do great right away. Well, that's fantastic. But in other, that, that's that's one side of the equation. Sometimes it does work out right away and the, t- and the system almost just is a perfect match. But with certain other instances, you need to get the players to learn the system and initiate themselves into the system and then grow. That's what it looks like here, and that takes a little bit of time. So this has been a weekly preview to the Phantoms where we play the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins, the Utica Comets, the old Binghampton Devils, and then also the Syracuse Crunch. 
Let's try to get points, keyword points, in at least two of these three games this week and build off of that as this team has a new foundation, has a new kind of mantra and system going forward. It's going to take time, and I'm giving it time to grow. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe, and I hope you all enjoyed this edition of the Ghostly Take. Please comment down below if you want to join the comments or subscribe down below or up above if you enjoy the content. Thank you, everybody. Peace out.